We also like to plot uh, the motion of objects using a distance time graph. And to obtain that data, we use a little gizmo that you see here called a, a, a timer, a ticker timer. What we have is a long strip of paper that goes through the timer. And the timer makes little dots on the paper as the paper is pulled through by the little cart here. And so what you get when the experiment is over, you get this ticker tape that has all these dots on it. We can then uh, read these dots or measure these dots using a ruler. And I'm just going to put the ruler up against the dots here. And uh, we have a chart here that shows us the, the elapsed time uh, measured in seconds. And uh, we have the distance. So all we've got to do now is simply read off the distance on our ruler. So at the time of zero, the object hadn't moved anywhere. So that was a distance of 0.0, .0 millimeters. And then if we carry on to the next stop, which is 0.1, we see it's gotten uh, five millimeters and at the next stop it's gotten to 10.0 and it looks like it's going up on a fairly regular pattern here but we just carry on measuring at 0.5 of a second it's got uh, gone 25 millimeters 30 millimeters 35 millimeters 40 millimeters 45 millimeters and by the time it's completed one second it's gone 50 millimeters. So there's our data. We simply collect that by, by measuring uh, and putting it down on a chart. Now, once we've gotten our data, we then want to graph it. So we have our, our data table over here on the right-hand side. And uh, on my graph, I see that I've got a distance time graph for a toy car. I'm going to measure distance here on the vertical axis or the dependent axis because the distance you travel depends upon time. So time is independent. Time goes on the horizontal axis. You'll always see it down there. And all we've got to do is plot these points. So at, uh, at a time of zero seconds, I've gone uh, zero millimeters. And at a time of 0.1, I've gone five. And at a next time of uh, uh, 0 0.2, I've gone 10. And then 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. So it looks like I got myself a nice straight line here. In fact, if I wanted to, I could probably get out a ruler and I could say, why don't I just take a ruler and connect these lines? So I've got a nice straight line showing the data taken from my ticker tape here. Now, having obtained that line, the next thing we want to do is find the slope. And the reason for finding the slope will become obvious in a minute here. First off, let's review how we find slope. If you remember from your math class, slope is found by taking the rise divided by the run. Well, the rise is measuring distance, so we need the change in distance. And the run is time. The horizontal is the time. We want the change in time. That's going to give us the delta d divided by delta t. Well, if you recall, if you take distance and divide it by time, you've got the speed. So in essence, when you find the slope of this graph, what you're getting is the speed of the object. So here's our data. How do we find the slope of it? I think I might switch colors and do this one in green. Well, the easiest way to do it would be to find that total distance right here. And what is that, uh, what's that change in distance? Well, it went from uh, 50 down to zero. And so our change in distance was 50 millimeters. All right, what's the, uh, what's the change in time? Uh, well, we went from a total of 1.0 seconds down to 0 seconds, so the change in time was 1.0 seconds. So when it comes time to calculate our slope, slope is rise divided by run. The rise was worth 50 millimeters. The run was um, 10 seconds. And Oh, sorry, 1 second. Put that decimal point back in here. So what is 50 divided by uh, 1? It's going to be 50 millimeters per second. So there's the speed of our little toy car. It's 50 millimeters per second. Now, let's just have a look at a, another example again, because we're going to practice this several times. We've got uh, data collected here for a jet traveling at a uniform speed. And they want us to draw the distance time graph. They want us to find the slope. And they want to tell us what that slope uh, represents. So we have our data over here. There's our chart. 
And we're going to now take that over to our graph. And once again, we have time on the horizontal axis because it's the independent variable. Distance is on the vertical axis because the distance depends upon time. So we have at a time of zero, we've got a distance of zero. So that's pretty easy. Put our little dot there. At a time of one second, we've gone 490, just a shade below uh, 500. At two seconds, we've gone 1020 just a little bit over that line. At three seconds, we've gone 1490, just under that 1500. At four seconds, we've gone 2010. And at five seconds, we've gone 2480. Well, once again, it looks to me like we've got ourselves a, a pattern going on here. It looks like we have a very nice straight line that I can connect with what's called a line of best fit. And sometimes the dots are a little bit under, sometimes the dots are a little bit under, but on average, there's where my line fits. Now, with that in place, I can then proceed to do the slope of this line because here's my rise right here, and my rise is going to be my maximum number, which is 2,480, minus the initial number, well, I started at zero, uh, meters. So the amount of rise is 2,480 meters. And the run, the time, well, I finished off at uh, 5.0 seconds. My initial starting point was 0, 0.0 seconds. So overall, the change in time or the delta t is um, 5 decimal 0 seconds. Okay, well, I can now go ahead and calculate slope because if you remember, slope is the rise divided by the run. So in our case, the rise was 2,480 meters. The run was 5.0 seconds. And if we uh, bust out the calculator and uh, do a little bit of math, uh, we see that it looks like I've already done the calculation. 2,480 divided by 5 is 496. So our jet was going 496 meters per second. Please remember, when you're doing your calculations, these aren't just numbers, they are measurements. And so what should appear after your number is the actual measurements that we're using. Don't forget those things. That's going to get you messed up in this course.